Hey everybody, it's Chuck and I'm back out in the shop today. Been working on a new concept. I, my friend Lance Valentine can have a coffee hour live. I should be able to tape happy hour. What do you guys think? Ah, iced tea. So, anyway, the purpose of this video is I'm going to show you guys what I do as far as my crawler harnesses go. Now uh, you might be thinking, Chuck, you already talked about crawler harnesses. Yeah, but I had one of the subscribers go, how do I tie them? And that's, you know, I'm different from most folks. And I'll admit that. I like a three-hook harness. And I used to be on pro staff with Matt Suo, and, you know, everybody knows uh, the big triple, or the... Uh, sickle hooks that we would use on our jigs and stuff for the Detroit River. Well, they made hooks also. <clears throat> and I like that sickle feature. You know, you stick it right through the fish and it gets caught on that angle and it ain't wiggling loose versus a round one. So I like that concept. I like three hooks versus two. Um, my back two hooks are number twos, which is usually the standard for most people. You know, they want a I don't know why they want it, to be honest with you. You know, it could be two hooks, it could be three hooks, but usually it's a number eight or a number ten treble hook uh, with three and a half, four inches, and then a number two in front of that, and then they start building their harness. Not me, I want three hooks. I hate it when my stuff comes back, the board pulled back, I get excited, and my crawler is bit in half. So I don't do the two hook thing. And... I mentioned I got the number twos in the back. I like a number one in the front for two reasons. One, fish tend to attack the blade. You know, whether it's from the back and they're looking at the color of the back of the blade, or they see it when it's going by and they see the color on the front of the blade and swim around and swipe be right behind the blade. I want that big hook. I want them to miss the blade, catch the hook, and get jaw jacked. So, that's why I like three hooks. That's the brand of hooks that I'm still using. I think Eagle Claw is making something. Don't quote me. Um, if you're, you know, I like VMCs also. A lot of my treble hooks that I use for my stingers are all VMCs. Uh, a lot of my replacement hooks for no matter what brand of crankbait I'm running or VMCs, I like that hook. All right. So the next part, talked about the hooks. And next, I'm going to talk about the line. Look, if you're the the weekend warrior and you don't want to spend twenty, well, anywhere from fifteen to twenty five bucks on a roll of fluorocarbon, you know what? I can't say anything. I've caught a lot of big fish on regular amount of filament, whether it was 12 pounders pulling cranks on 15 pound big game or catching 11 pound fish that if it had not been spawned out when I caught this one in May and I'll show you the picture of that one. Uh, that fish was just under, just under 30, right around three, 33 and a quarter, but just under 11 pounds. So if that fish would have had a, it would have been a 15 pound fish in Breast Bay. How amazing is that? You don't have to go to Fort Clinton to catch big fish. Although you catch more of them there. Don't get me wrong, I ain't knocking on Ohio in this circumstance. So anyway, if you have 20 pound line laying around, or if you want to go 25, that's up to you. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, most tournament guys are going to run 20 pound fluorocarbon. All right, so if I am out in the big water and it's late April, it's May, early, early June, uh, my leaders are going to be six and a half, seven foot. I'm going to do the whole wingspan thing. My wingspan is right around six, and if I want a little extra line, you know, I'll peel off another six inches for my wraps on the hooks, which I'll get into in a sec. Or if I'm doing Detroit this time of the year or after the jig bites over with and you don't want a hand line but you want to pull some bottom bouncers I'll do about a 40 inch harness All right and 
is it the same every single time? No, but it's pretty close. So I want to get about 40 inches. All right. I'm going to take these little snips from Harbor Freight. Love these things when it comes from mono. They work great. There's no fingernail clippers falling apart. Uh, no scissors that take up space. You know, a dollar. They're there. Um, I'm going to take the two number twos. And I'm going to take this tag in. And I'm going to lay it back along the length of the shank of the hook. And I want it no farther back to where the shank starts to bend into the hook itself. So I'm going to pinch that in the back. I'm going to pull that line behind the eye. Then I'm going to go crazy with my wraps. Now there are other types of hooks or snells that you could use. They're a little more time consuming. But I'm also going to show you a quick trip tip at the end of this. All right, then I'm going to take that front end on the lead, put my fingers back here like this so it'll take out any loops that might have formed because, or twists, because I was wrapping that line and twisting that line in the front. All right, so that's my first one. Take my second number two, run this there through there, Okay, and then I'm going to measure about it from the eye to the back of that angle on that hook, about an inch, pull the line back behind the eye, do my crazy wraps, and I've never really counted these, maybe I'll do that on the last hook, but I like to get a fair distance behind that eye. And again, I'm going to put my fingers back through here just because it breaks up the twists and then it pulls tight. Do you have to do it? No, but if you try to pull one of those twists through the eye, it can kink it. All right. So I'm going to take that big number one. Stretch it out to about another inch in front of that. Pull it back behind the eye and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's stop at 14. So anywhere between 10 and 14 will get the job done. Put my fingers back through there. Don't get any snags. Grab the back hook, grab the front of the leader, pull it tight. And that's my three hook harness. All right. You lose a couple of inches from doing the wraps and I'm still right in the strike zone where I wanna be, which is gonna be 34 to 36 inches. All right. Now I'm gonna take a foam board. Uh, this could be anything you want it to be. Um, if you're into contracting, you probably realize this is a piece of insulation that I have cut off and used for my own purposes. See, so one, two, three, four. This is my second take. Pretty good. I had the, oh, take it back, third take. I tied the first three on and put them on the board for you to see. And... I think I repeated myself in one of the takes. Uh, one of the other takes, we had company, so I had to start over for that reason. All right. So I could leave it alone. That harness is good to go if you're anybody but me. You know, if will those wraps come undone? Not very often, but it has happened to me, so I like taking the extra precaution of adding. Well, for the lack of a better term, an adhesive. All right. And this is something you can fly, find in a fly fishing shop. All right. Bottle's a little old, so I'm shaking her up. 
This is a larva lace product. It's sold by Hagen's. Uh, if you're not familiar with Hagen's, you've probably never built anything for fishing on your own and bought it straight out of the store, which is fine. You guys are our bread and butter. But this is a fly dressing. This is something you would pl apply to your thread. All right. Uh, when I first started using this stuff back in like 03, 04, it was fantastic. You know, I could whip out 40 harnesses or 40 liters in an hour and then just go back and apply this to each and every one of the wraps and I was done. You know, be honestly, the 40 didn't take an hour, but by the time I got done with this eight minutes later, it was complete. So it's larva lace. It's called Flex Lock. And, you know, I just take this off. Grab this artsy brush, dip it in there, and then I am going to apply it to my wraps. And if you got enough on, you can tell because that fluorocarbon or monofilament becomes almost clear and you can see the shank of the hook. Everything's golden. All right. And I've only got one more to do. And, all right, got a little bit left on the brush. Instead of wasting it on the paper towel, I'm just going to touch up some of the other ones until it's dry. All right, so I am ready to decide what am I going to do next. All right. Now, I'm not going to use some of the big blades, the different funky looking ones, my hatchets or anything. Actually, I could run some hatchets, but I'm going to stick with Colorado's for this presentation. I'm not going to be running the big Indianas or some of the crazy sizes that I run in May and June, or uh, late April, May. Yeah, maybe even early June, but typically I switch over to Colorado's in June. For the Detroit River, I'm going to run number five Colorado's like this pink dace from Northland Tackle, or number six like this gold shiner from Northland Tackle. All right. Now, I told you before in the last video that I like the stack beads from Max Lures. Uh, there's a few generics out there. Um, you can get some of them at Frank's Great Outdoors. I believe you can get some at Cabela's Bass Pro. Uh, support local. Love the guys up at Frank's. It's like my one stop when it comes to walleye fishing. Um, one stop shop. So, all right. Argument's sake, I'm running nothing but number five, number six, Colorado. So here's the tip. Something that's real easy for you to remember. I'm running a number six, Colorado. Chuck, how many beads do I use? Well, I use number six or the six millimeter beads, right? And this is really easy. If it's a size six blade, you run seven beads from the hook to the clevis. And that keeps that blade off the hook close enough to where the fish will still grab it. If it's number five, you run six. Real easy, just add one, same thing with the number four. You know, for some reason, if you're running fours, um, if it's a four, run five, okay? I do tend to put a bead in front of the clevis. It just keeps possible weeds from getting on that and stopping it from spinning. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, I think that's it as far as my harnesses go. Now, if I'm going, all right, I'm going to show you this one real quick. You know, everybody goes, what kind of loop or what kind of snell do you use for the front of your harness? All right. You know, if I wanted to spend the extra money, I could put another swivel at the front of it and just snell the air up, do like an improved clench to that perfectly fine you know my weights my leaders my different doohickeys in front of this stuff already got swivels on them so you know i guess if you're running cheap stuff and it's not ball bearing go ahead put another crane swivel in the front of it uh i'm not going to do it so what i'm going to do is just pretend this is like your main line coming from the lure, the presentation, your leader, and this is going to be the tagline that's left over. 
I'm going to end up with a little loop like that. I'm trying to find a dark space where you can actually see it. And then I'm going to pull it back, pull that tag in back, and then I'm going to bin the loop back. And I am going to come through this twice. This is a double loop knot. And then because it's here, I'm going to take the brush. I'm going to pull this tight. Make sure that knot's not going to slip. This does not work with braid. Absolutely will not work with braid. It will slip out. It's not good. All right. Dollar. Harbor Freight, 10 snips, wire snips. Where did I get 10 snips? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have happy hour. So I'll get rid of that. And then I've got my loop. All right. 20 pound Northern did not pull it out. 12 pound Walleye have not pulled it out. This will not break. All right. Well, maybe on a snag it will, but that's a different ball game. Any fish is not going to break that. Easy peasy. And that's how I finish my stuff off after I put my hardware on. Okay. So. Boom. Recap. Big water harnesses. Six and a half foot. Six foot. Seven foot. Far away from my weight or my diver. Uh, Detroit River. I'm shooting for 34 36 inches. I want something that's going to be a little bit closer to the bottom bouncer I'm going to be using. All right. Um, yeah, just snags. Snags and snags and snags. 20 pound. Can it be monofilament? Yes, it can. Does it have to be fluorocarbon? No, it doesn't. Are you trying to win money? Then play with the fluorocarbon. You know, you're 175 yard your 200 250 yard roll whatever it is that's going to cost you between 15 and 25 bucks you know it's going to last you a couple years like i said i could do 40 of these things in an hour um you can see i already got one board that i smelled up this spring i haven't even touched it yet that's big game and then i made up another board that i had with fluorocarbon no problem with that. I keep that on a leader roll. I can take two leader rolls, you know, the foam pool noodles, and I can take those on a trip with me, and I will not finish off the two of them while I'm pre-fishing. That's the nice thing about having the quick change clevis is you can just change your blade out, right? Change sizes, you're going to have to play with the beads a little bit, but uh, not too badly. All right, recap. Some of the simple things I use, the foam board for just storing them. Uh, I've got two number twos and a number one Matsuo on there. Check into it. Maybe Eagle Claws making them in a single hook besides just the jig hook. I believe they were calling them little nasties. Maybe they're a thicker gauge. That might be a good thing. Um, your Colorados, your 20-pound fluorocarbon. Little artsy craftsy brush for applying the flex lock, uh, the dollar snips, larva lace flex lock, LOC. All right. Grab some lure lipstick, love the stuff in dirty water. Anything that's going to bring a fish in besides the thump, you know, you got to have it. So that's how I build my leaders. That's how I snell my hooks. Uh, if you liked it, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like it, I don't care. You know, that's up to you. It's not like YouTube is paying me for this stuff um, yet. So, yeah, in that case, hit the subscribe button. All right? Till next time, guys. Bye.